So I made these little tabs right here, welded them to my sleeve, and I TIG welded it to the shaft collar. So as you can see, it's nice TIG welded. I mean, I'm all right. I'm decent at TIG welding. I wouldn't say I'm the best, but it'll work. I'm still gonna add a plate right there just to give it strength, because essentially, this thing right here is lifting the whole entire car. So I definitely wanna make that as strong as possible right there. got a problem got some cylinders here and got everything mocked up kind of sort of and as you can see this is where I want the mount to sit and this is the bar right there that's about as high as I want it up on the axle but as you can see that don't work what I'm gonna do now is redesign this bottom bracket and redesign this top bracket right here. Start by welding this bar in, getting this fixed, and working from there. My game plan is to remove the axle, tack weld the lower brackets on. I'm gonna pull it because I'm gonna put it on the table over there. And I measured my pinion angle, how it sits right now. So once I put it on the table, I can match that pinion angle and then weld on these brackets. That way that's parallel with the ground. That's the way I designed the brackets to be. And then from there, then I can kind of see how much play I have. You can kind of see it's hitting right there. So the bar definitely needs to go back. Because I want this to be, uh, I'm going to give it a slight forward pitch, but not like a crazy pitch. When the car raises up, the cylinder is going to try to go backwards. So I want to try to keep this cylinder as straight as possible the whole time throughout the whole cycle. So I kind of got to find a happy medium. So we're just going to give it a slight forward pitch. Then I can measure where to put that bar and see what I have clearance with. And then from there, I can make that upper bracket. axles on the table at that 70 degrees right there. I don't know why I didn't measure it there, um, but that's where it's supposed to be. So from now on, I'm gonna measure it from right there. So new measurement, 22 degrees, 22.1. So I'll just keep that there and I'll keep checking it here just in case. But so now this is set up exactly the way it was set up in the car. And I can get all this axle cleaned up and start tackling the other pieces on. we got the lower brackets tack welded on i had to do those things like three times first time i did it i wasn't sure on the angle so figured that out and then i decided to move them further out towards the wheels problem was i couldn't that's hot <laughs> i couldn't get the uh lower control arm bolts out so i had to move them back in slightly and i have the bar cut to length um so now i'm just gonna measure it all up get it square 
I did a quick cycle of the suspension to kind of see how far back or forward I needed the bar. So I got that figured out. So now I'm just gonna get this thing all squared up and tackled it in. And then I can put the cylinders in. And from there I can see how I need to make the top bracket. And then after that, everything will be tack welded. I can cycle the suspension and see if this thing's actually gonna work or not. But we'll see, we'll see. Don't you love it when you tack weld something on because it might have to move and it has to move and you have to take the tack welds off and remove them, but the tack welds don't want to break. But when you tack weld something on because you want it to stay and it breaks off, that's so annoying. Anywho, I got the top bracket design made up. Not 100% sure how I feel about it. There it is right there. I think what I might do is might put an angle to it right there and then box it in of course i think i'll get some more hardware this only thing i had laying around that was long enough there's a cylinder mount on the bottom the cylinder is expanded to about 10 inches which i'm gonna run more than likely 10 inch cylinders 10 inch cylinder will come up to about right there or so instead of having this extra length right there however if i did want to run bigger cylinders i always could because this is a 18 inch cylinder i believe it's a big cylinder so I'm definitely not running it that big so next step cut another one out probably shave that back sideways i don't know i don't know if i want to do that or not because i designed it on cad and it, it looks kind of weird so i might just leave it like that it looks weird like that too don't get me wrong but i don't know Got the suspension all mocked up and actually went ahead and welded some of the pieces in. Hopefully it works. It should work. I don't see why not. But if I have to cut this off, I'm going to be a little upset. <laughs> but it should be all right. So I just jacked up the uh, back of the frame with the cherry picker. And I mean, everything looks correct. Nothing looks like it's going to be in a bind or anything like that. So hopefully it works. Hopefully it works. So now I need to get a pump and actually plumb them and hit the switches and make sure they're going to work for sure, for sure. Still going to put the springs in between here. I just got to cut them down because they come a little tall. So 10 inch cylinders, that's about where it's going to be. I actually think this is going to work pretty well. I mean, I could stand on it, jump on it. I know I don't weigh that much, but I mean, this seems pretty stout. I don't think it's going anywhere. I think this will work. This is pretty cool. It's pretty cool, not gonna lie. It's way different. I think, I think, maybe, we'll see. I might add a bar across here just to give it extra strength. I know these hydraulics have a ton of uh, force and stuff on it, so might add a bar, might not, I don't know, we'll see. So the next step is get a pump, make sure it works, and then we can start on the front suspension. Again, still not sure what I'm gonna do. Have to figure that out since the turbo headers are right there. These are for sure gonna get cut out and uh get a cylinder mounted in there and see what i'm working with i'm gonna start there and figure out something after that and if you have any ideas on the front suspension on how i should do this let me know if there's something crazy and different like the rear suspension i'm down with it if it'll work and i can figure it out um if not if you have any other ideas let me know and i'll try it out if it's worth a shot all right so the curiosity is getting the best of me I'm gonna go next door and I'm pulling the pump and batteries out of my car and I'm gonna make a uh, temporary, just very temporary tack welded in battery rack and pump rack. Also, I wanna show you guys, see this? This is a plug and a cap. So I know hydraulics are pretty messy because when you're taking them apart, all the fluid comes out, but put these caps and plugs in there it stops from leaking out so if you don't have some of these go to your hardware store and go pick these up because these things are a lifesaver they uh save you from making a big mess 
So here's the trunk setup, just six batteries, whammy tank. It had some nice chrome uh, solenoid blocks, but those got burnt up. So trunk setup looks a little messy right now. It used to look really good, but it's okay because we're redoing it all anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this pump pulled out and take a couple batteries out. Probably only gonna take two batteries out just so I can make it go up and down. I'm not trying to make it hot or hop or anything right now. So two batteries should be good couple solenoids and since it's a whammy I gotta remove the front and back pumps technically so it's gonna make a mess so but let me show you guys so this is the front so what I'll do is disconnect the lines and put one of these plugs in there and that'll stop it from leaking out well I got the whammy tank out and a couple batteries so what I'm gonna do is just a real 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 quick rack just to hold the stuff that's racked for four batteries but you know i'm only going to put two in there because that's all i need to cycle the suspension uh, i had that laying around from another project we didn't end up doing that this is a plate racked for three but i'm gonna cut another one out for two because i have a file for it too um this pretty much welds onto your battery rack and you can bolt in your solenoids and then i have these plates right here that i made pretty much what it is just a mounting plate for your pumps so pretty much That'll go on like that. I'll weld another one and the whammy tank will be able to bolt up to it. Those are also the same dimensions as just a regular pump if you don't have a whammy. So if you just have just a regular pump, you can use those as well. I do all those on all my setups. Pretty much I use rectangle tubing just like that. Mount those, mount those, and it works out great. So I do sell those. If you are interested in buying these, they make everything a lot easier. Instead of taking angle iron and drilling through them, those are a lot better in my opinion. And again, what I'm doing now is purely for mock-up. This isn't the actual rack I'm gonna use. I'm gonna determine that once I actually get the body on the frame, then I can kind of build my rack from there. So this is just temporary, just to cycle the suspension, make sure everything works. So I'm gonna do the back. And then once I get started on the front, then I can start uh, running the hoses to there, see if anything's gonna hit and fix it while the body's off. If you were building a rack, you know, then you'd come over here, put your batteries there on the side, and then you have your mounts for your whammy tank. And then if you're doing like a single uh, pump, then you just plug in the bars like this, have your batteries on the sides right there, and then you can mount your pump like that. Now everything is wired up completely. I made me just a quick little switch thing real quick. You can see I got my 24 volts. And that goes to the middle prong and then I have the up part going to the solenoid that'll supply power to the motor and then I got the dumps going down to the down prong so it's a three prong uh, top prong is going to be dump to go down middle prong is going to be your 24 volts and your bottom prong is going to be your up so that's how you wire it up I'll do a more in-depth video on how to wire up the hydraulics all right so this is it Everything's hooked up, about to connect the ground. I don't know how much charge is in these batteries. They've been sitting for a while, so they might even be dead. But we'll see. Curious to see what happens. Now I know the first couple of hits of the switch, it's not gonna do nothing. That's because the pump still has to pump the fluid through the hoses. But we'll see, we'll see. So now we should be going down. Oh yeah. Heck yeah, that's freaking awesome. Let's do it again. And back down. <laughs> that's tight. That's super tight. That's tight.
Heck yeah, I'm happy. That's freaking tight. Alright, that stuff's so cool to me. It's cool, it's cool. It's I don't even know what to say. I know it's so simple, and it might not even be that cool to you guys, but it's just something that's been circulating in my head for so long, and now to see it actually happening and working, it's so cool to me. So that's a wrap on that one, guys. Pretty happy with the outcome on how the rear suspension came out. Um, I am gonna add a bar for sure, probably from here to the middle, from the middle up there, just to kind of stabilize those towers a little bit better. And again, if you have any ideas on how to run this front suspension without hitting my turbo headers, you can see I knocked that out already. Um, let me know in the comments. But like always, guys, thanks for watching my video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. And I will see you guys on the next video with the front suspension. So I'll see you guys later. Peace.